You're lacking in energy and you want to take a peptide. Which one should you take? Let's talk about it. Hey folks, just a quick reminder. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not an educator. This is entirely for entertainment purposes only. You shouldn't listen to anything I have to say. Definitely don't do anything that I did. I can only speak for myself and personal experience. Make sure that you listen to your doctors and your WHO overlords. That's it. Let's get to the video. Now, in the world of peptides, there are a few that claim to sort of restore your energy. And those are typically things like MOTC and NAD+, plus, even though NAD+, plus is not technically a peptide. But it's almost always sold on the peptide websites. Now, in addition to that, sometimes you'll see L-carnitine. Sometimes you'll even see stimulants like albuterol and clenbuterol and yohimbine and a mix of vitamin B12 and a few other things that are supposed to give you energy. So which one do you choose? Well, I don't want you to think that I clickbaited you. So again, I'm going to give you a few suggestions at the end, but here's the thing. Your diet and your lifestyle habits are the biggest factor in whether you're going to have energy on a daily basis or not. If you are not doing your cardio, if you're not weightlifting, if you eat garbage, you're going to feel like crap. And I don't care how much MOTC you take or NAD plus or L-carnitine or anything else. You're still going to feel like crap. You are. You're going to feel like crap. Now, I say that with one caveat. If you have been eating like garbage and you haven't been doing your workouts, it's very likely that you are metabolically a mess. And then as soon as you take something like MOTC, it will wake you up and you will feel like a million bucks. But that's not because this is some like elixir of life. It's because you're a mess. If you're already optimized, well optimized, you're already healthy, you're already working out, your VO2 max is already pushing its upper limit, you're lean, you've got good muscle mass, you're eating clean, you're going to take MOTC and go, eh, this wasn't much of anything. And that's simply because uh, you're already in good shape. And now you're just kind of pushing from 95% optimized to 97%. And that extra 2%, you're, you're just not going to feel it. But if you're at like 10% and all of a sudden you jump up to 50, you're going to feel so much better. So diet and exercise, obviously, obviously diet and exercise. I, everybody hates hearing it, but it's so true. Diet and exercise first and foremost. And here's the second thing. Go get your blood work done. Go get your blood work done. You need to know your vitamin D levels. You need to know your magnesium levels. You need to know your blood count. You need to know what your hormones look like. I was just recently dealing with terrible lethargy, terrible lethargy. Now I had just come off a cycle of deanodione, which I made a video about, check that one out. And I thought the deanodione was affecting my liver. And because it had beat up my liver, it was causing the lethargy. It turns out it had nothing to do with it. My liver was actually in great shape. I was taking injectable glutathione, and although what it did affect was my digestion, my digestion was a mess while pushing the end of that cycle, but the lethargy had nothing to do with that. The lethargy was because I had um, pushed a little bit too high on a particular compound that was now suppressing my estradiol, and my E2 came back single digits. Now, that manifests differently in different people, and for me, that was terrible, terrible lethargy. I felt like a zombie, completely out of it, apathetic, and then overly emotional, and then back to apathy. It was bad. It was really, really bad. Now, I mean, my mind, the whole time, I was running higher levels of estradiol. And it turns out that I'm either in the sweet spot, exactly where I need to be on my estradiol. If I go too high or I go too low, I get similar side effects, interestingly enough. Now, on the higher end, I don't get lethargy, but on the low end, I definitely do. I never get any anxiety. A lot of people do. They get terrible, terrible anxiety. I didn't get any of that. For me, it was apathy, uh, sometimes overly emotional, and terrible, terrible lethargy. So go get your blood work because, honestly, you're taking these peptides and you're injecting yourself with this, that, and the other, and you're thinking it's going to fix it when the entire time, maybe your testosterone levels are really, really low. And you need to be jumping on TRT or HCG or enclomiphene or something. You need to boost your testosterone levels. Maybe your, your testosterone levels are fine, but your estradiol levels are low. Maybe. 
Uh, if you're not taking exogenous hormones, that's unlikely, but it is a possibility. Maybe your SHBG is too high. Maybe your vitamin D is too low. Maybe your magnesium levels are off. Maybe your iron's off, or this is extremely common, your B12 levels are off. Maybe they're extremely low. Maybe you need to be taking a methylated version of vitamin B12. Maybe your body is unable to metabolize vitamin B properly. And no matter how much B12 you actually take, uh, your body's not actually absorbing any of it. So you need to go in for blood work. You need to check your vitamin B12 levels along with your B6 and your B9. You need to check all of it. Checking your blood work will then allow you to dictate your protocol down the road. So if your hormones are off, fix your hormones, exogenous hormones, whatever it is you need to do. So if your hormones are off, fix your hormones first. Peptides aren't going to help you there. They're not. They're not going to help you. If you know you're eating like garbage, fix your diet. Put in a workout protocol, whether it's a combination of cardio and resistance training, something in there. That, along with a good diet, will boost your energy levels. But let's say you just want to kick it up a notch. If you've been a mess in the past, so let's say you were pushing 300 pounds, you've lost 150 pounds, now you're much leaner, you're living a healthier lifestyle, what should you run first? You might be a good candidate for SS31. SS31, in very simplistic terms, does the repair work. And then you can introduce something like MOTC, which then optimizes your mitochondrial function. So you start with SS31, run a protocol of that, and then add in your MOTC. You should be doing an AD plus once a year at least at least. And you can combine that with something like NMN, which is simply a precursor. So you can run that throughout the year, or you can run something like 5-amino-1-MQ, which is going to push up your NAD levels. A lot of people take 5-amino-1-MQ for fat loss, but honestly, you're probably not going to see some fat loss unless you're ridiculously lean and you're trying to get even leaner. Then you might see some fat loss benefit from 5-amino-1-MQ, but you can definitely get some benefit from 5-amino-1-MQ with your energy levels if you're taking NAD plus injections and you want to keep pushing up your uh, endogenous NAD production, you take a 5-amino-1-MQ, something like 50 milligrams a day. And then finally, pre-workout, there's nothing better than L-carnitine. And you can keep pushing up your doses too. If you don't feel anything with 500 milligrams, go to 600, go to 750, go to 1,000 milligrams. It's whatever you can afford. I've pushed up to 1,000 milligrams pre-workout. You feel like a million bucks when you go work out. And you don't always need stims if you're taking L-carnitine. And on top of that too, it pushes up your endurance. So instead of tiring out at 45 minutes or an hour into your workout, 90 minutes and two hours are no problem when you're taking L-carnitine. You can just keep going longer and longer and longer. And I'm talking like a two hour heavy lifting, heavy lifting, and then another 30 minutes of cardio afterwards. No problem with L-carnitine, even though cardiovascularly, you're not like at a hundred percent, like you're not in tip top shape there, but you can do it if you are injecting higher doses of L-carnitine. It's a 10 out of 10, definitely jump on that. And then if you are already in the gym and you want to push up your endurance even further, you can introduce something like carterine. Carterine at 10 milligrams a day, man, it puts you on a completely different level of endurance. Completely different level of endurance. Now, something like that, I cycle on and off. I go eight weeks and then I cycle off for eight, a minimum of eight weeks, and then I jump back on. And really, I do it if I'm in a calorical deficit because you're already depriving your body of energy. And so adding those 10 milligrams a day gives you that extra little bit of boost. But man, when you come off of it, you immediately, that next day you feel it. The next day you feel it. it's like, man, I cannot go as long on this cardio session as easily as I could just yesterday. And it's not even, it, are the cardio sessions hard? Yeah, they, they're hard, but you just don't feel the exertion the same. It, it's just, it's a lot easier to get through your cardio when you're on cartering than when you're off of it. And it helps with the lipids. It helps with the lipids. It's, it's a fantastic compound, 10 out of 10 compound.
Do not run it all year long though. Eight weeks at a time, 10 milligrams a day. I've never seen a reason to go higher. I know some people do. I think that's ridiculous. There are risks there. 10 milligrams a day, eight weeks, that's enough. I'm over 200 pounds and that's enough for me. I don't see any reason to go any higher than 10 milligrams. So again, just to reiterate, diet and exercise first. Get your blood work done. Check your vitamin levels. Check your electrolyte levels. Check your blood count. Check your hormones. Make sure those are all in line. If they are all in line and you want to bump it up, that's where you go. SS31, MOTC, NAD+, 5-amino-1-MQ, NMN, L-carnitine, carterine. All of those in combination. Should you do them all at the same time? Absolutely not. Yeah, I, you know who I'm talking about. The guy that goes, I'm going to do it all and starts just pounding peptide on top of peptide on top of peptides. Like, dude, at the end of the day, these are research chemicals. Okay, and you're doing the research on yourself. Do you really know what combining 15 different peptides all at once is going to do for you? No, you have no idea. There's no studies on that. There's no studies on doing AOD, GH, Tessamorelin, uh, 5-amino-1-MQ, MOTC, SS31, L-carnitine, all on top of testosterone. And who the hell knows what else you're taking? That's insane to me. Like, what are you doing? Don't do that. Now, have I done it? Uh, maybe. But would I recommend it to anybody? No. And here's the biggest reason why. I didn't see any benefit running 50 different peptides all on top of each other versus just locking in on your diet and making sure that you're taking your steps. Really, I, I'm not kidding. Like I took 50 different weight loss peptides trying to get as lean as possible and I lost as much body fat as I would have just doing 15,000 steps a day. And what do you think would have been healthier for me? 50 different peptides or 15,000 steps? Just do the steps. Quit trying to inject the problem away. It's not going to go away. Do the steps. Lock in your diet. Make sure your hormones are right. Make sure blood work looks fantastic. And then if you want that extra little boost, add in a MOTC or an NAD plus or something like that. L-carnitine you can run all year round. Like I take that 365. I have no problem running that all the time. It's fantastic. But other than that, cycle everything else cycle everything else, but make sure that you are putting in one or two different compounds at the right times to coincide with particular goals. Like if you're going into a deep cut, start out without any peptides. And as you start to go deeper and deeper into that calorical deficit, you're going to need a little boost in energy. And that's where you would need to add in a MOTC or an NAD+. That makes sense there. But don't start off with 50 different compounds thinking that's going to accelerate your fat loss. At the end of the day, like at the most, you might be liberating some fat deposits into the blood, but then you have to do something with it. And that specifically is burning it up with extra energy expenditure. Go do your steps. Do you 15,000 steps, you will burn all those free fatty acids floating around in your blood. If you don't, what's it going to do with it? It's got to do something with that fat. It's just going to redeposit it. Like what else can it do with it? You're not burning it off. Stop doing the 50 peptides at once. Stop. Clean your diet up. Take your steps. Anyway, that should fix your energy. That's all I got for today. Bye.